Hello and welcome to the second part of Microbiome and Health. In this module, we will learn more about the methods used in microbiome research. But before we dive into the techniques, we would like to emphasize the complexity of studying microbiomes and throw in some numbers. Imagine one square centimeter of leaf surface contains over 1 million bacteria and only one bacterium contains up to 7,000 different genes and up to 2,000 messenger RNA molecules that are then translated to over 2 million proteins which catalyze the production of metabolites in the end. This is in one bacterial cell. About the number of metabolites, there are not even estimations anymore. All this is in continuous dynamic in response to biotic and abiotic fluctuations. In general, currently available methods for studying microbiomes are summarized under the term multiomics. They range from advanced microscopy, high throughput isolation, also known as culturomics, metabolic coding and metagenomics, which are used to understand microbial community composition, diversity and functional potential or metatranscriptomics, metaproteomics, and metabolomics to analyze gene expression, metabolomic function, and production. Microscopy is a great tool to visualize microorganisms inside or on host tissues. It is usually, however, used in combination with omics techniques as a complementary approach. Let's take fluorescence in situ hybridization combined with confocal laser scanning microscopy, or FISH CLSM, for example. The technique is based on hybridization of RNA probes labeled with fluorochromes targeting sequences such as the ribosomal RNA. Like it is shown here, it is usually allows the direct visualization of target cells. We can also use different probes to visualize different taxonomic groups. Fish CLSM provide useful estimations of cell numbers, and it is frequently used to visualize microbial colonization patterns and to some extent community composition. Three-dimensional models can be created to facilitate precise localization of signals and intimate associations between microorganisms. The analysis of native microbial communities using FESH CLSM also can help in hypothesis development and testing. The second technique we'll talk about today is culturomics. Culturomics is an important tool to study a high number of microbial species. This technique relies on the optimization and enrichment of cultural media and growth conditions. Together with co-cultivation, this increases the chances to isolate the highest diversity of microorganisms from an environment. DNA metabarcoding. The discovery of DNA, the development of sequencing technology, and PCR enabled the investigation of microbial communities using cultivation-independent approaches, in addition to traditional cultivation-based approaches. Metabarcoding relies on the presence of a gene or a DNA region that is shared among all organisms, which is called a barcode gene. For example, the 16S ribosomal RNA and the ITS are commonly used as a DNA barcode for prokaryotes and eukaryotes, respectively. We then amplify these genes using PCR. We can also add a non-biological DNA fragment to label each sample. This allows us to mix and sequence them together. Metabarcoding can help us understand the diversity, composition of whole microbial communities in their natural habitat. And it is currently one of the most popular techniques due to its simplicity and cost effectiveness. Metabarcoding, however, cannot tell us the function and activity of these microorganisms. To answer such a question, we must move to our next method, metagenomics. Metagenomic also starts by extracting the DNA from a sample, but rather than amplifying a specific gene, we can sequence all the extracted DNA. Depending on the sequencing platform we are going to use, we can either use the extracted DNA directly or we may need to cut it into smaller fragments. In either case, the sequence fragments are then assembled into larger contexts that we can use to annotate and predict genes and their functions. Metagenomics allows us to understand the genetic potential of the microbiome, but doesn't tell us which genes are actually active. This brings us to the next method. Metatranscriptomics. Metatranscriptomics is a method that can identify active genes of the microbiome and how much they are expressed. The way we do this is very similar to metagenomics, but instead of extracting the DNA, we extract the RNA. You may know that RNA is a single-stranded nucleic acid which cannot be directly sequenced by most sequencing platforms. Therefore, the extracted RNA must be converted first to a complementary DNA, 
or cDNA for short. Similar to metagenomics, the sequence cDNA is then assembled, annotated, and the functions of the identified genes is then predicted. However, if we want to identify and even quantify proteins synthesized by the microbiome, we need to move to our next approach, metaproteomics. Metaproteomics refers to a large-scale identification and quantification of proteins from a microbial community. Metaproteomics consists of extracting the proteins from a sample which are then separated and digested into peptides. Those include enzymes involved in various metabolic pathways. This brings us to the last omic technique we will talk about today, metabolomics. It is possible to analyze the whole spectrum of metabolites produced by a whole community or even from a single microbial cell. In the example shown here, we can detect the emitted volatile organic compounds using gas chromatography. It is even possible to find entirely new and unknown substance produced by the microbiome, as chromatography plays an important role for many steps within omics techniques, we would like to show you here the principle of chromatography itself. Basically, chromatography is used to separate a mixture in its components. These components can be peptides or metabolites. To sum up the overview, we would like to emphasize the degree of control in the experiments that should be considered when designing a study. The level you select will depend on your research hypothesis. Remember, all methods we talked about today answer different questions and have different advantages and disadvantages. This is why using different methods that complement each other is always necessary. Thank you for your attention.